In this video, I'm very excited to go over how I was able to trade the biggest runner in the small cap market today, ticker NEXI, for a $7,000 profit, which is shown on your screen right there. And I'm going to go over how I was able to alert ticker NEXI within my private Discord before the massive, massive run for $10 per share with the first alert being under the $3 level and if we flip over to the private discord you can see i added nexi at 29 right there at 605 a.m you can see nexi at 609 a.m nexi multiple times here a day trade id at 755 a.m on ticker nexi you know we can see nexi 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 and we can see another alert at market open for ticker nexi where i said it's still the play of the day and i'm going to be watching that one for a scalp so if you do want to join the private discord there is a link in the top and comment below and at the end of this video i'm going to go over some swing a trade opportunities that you guys have been asking about and that i am currently interested in guys remember i'm not a financial advisor i am just here to, to try to help you to try to help point you guys in the right direction and kind of you know go over the knowledge that i have learned trading small caps and kind of give it to you guys right now so what is the first thing that I saw with ticker NEXI? Why did I like this play and what is going on? First of all, I already knew this ticker, ticker NEXI. I already knew that it had a big run in the past. And since I trade the market every single day, I remember the small cap stocks that have the biggest runs. They, I just remember them. I literally simply, they just stay in my mind. And when I see them again, I already know what it is. And I already know they have the potential for big runs. And on December 1st, NEXI had a run from about, you know, under $3 to $13 per share for a 350% run. And then it came all the way back down. So I knew I already knew that NEXI had that big runner potential because it was able to do so in the past. It was able to do it previously. Second of all, I already I already looked at it and I see that NEXI is a 766k float. You're going to go over to dilution tracker here. It says 0.085 million, so it's actually more of an 800k float, which is very very low. And anything under a 1 million float is absolutely tiny within the small cap space. That's just about as low as you're going to get it. And if you guys don't know what the float is, that's how many shares are out there to be publicly traded overall so there's only 850,000 shares for ticker nexi to be traded now first of all i saw i woke up probably about you know 5 a.m here and i was looking at the weeble top gainers pre-market list and i already saw that nexi did start to gap up here about 20 percent on rather low volume although i was even though it did at that point have rather low volume i was still interested in it and i'll explain why with the due diligence and everything i'll cover that in a second but i was still interested in this play first of all because it was a previous runner and uh, i'll actually go over it right now why i was interested in it and we this is very very key context here to why i was interested in ticker nexi even on low volume, because usually I always say, you know, wait for that big volume, wait for that big volume. And I did wait for that big volume for the main trade out of it. But why was I interested in this before it had big, big volume on that just initial low volume gap up? This is why. NEXI is one of those plays, kind of like ticker CING. Remember, CING was a big 400% squeezer. And guess what? They really had bad news out that the company was potentially going bankrupt. For NEXI here, if we go to the filing section on Dilution Tracker and we check the DEF 14A, if you guys don't know what a DEF 14A filing is, that means there's an upcoming shareholder meeting. And if you look into that filing, you'll see what they are holding the meeting for for shareholders to vote on. And in this case for NEXI, they were holding a shareholder meeting to potentially approve 
approve a liquidation of the company, which means the company is basically, they're getting rid of the company. They're selling everything. They're selling all their assets and they're getting rid of the company. And that meeting to approve that liquidation was supposed to be held on December 21st, 2023. But they uploaded another filing on December 22nd, an 8K filing. And you and to go on that, you just click the 8K there, and then you see the form 8K. You click this document right here. You click that. You can see that that special meeting for the planned liquidation of the company was actually rescheduled. It was rescheduled. It was reconvened to January 18th, 2024. So it was supposed to be held on December 21st, where they're liquidating the company. They're liquidating the company, meaning by December 21st, the company is probably going to soon be off the market. It's going to be off the total stock market. It's going to go to pretty much zero. But it actually is going to happen a little bit later on January 18th, 2024. It's still going to happen, but it's going to happen later. And within the small cap space, you know, two weeks or three weeks is a lot of time. It gives obviously a lot of time for a stock to run. All you really need is just one day for a stock like this to run. So right off the bat, I was very interested in this stock, even with low volume, because there could have been already a lot of shorts, meaning people betting against a company in this play because these shorts, these people that were betting against a company were basically anticipating that the, the shareholders were going to approve liquidation of the company, get rid of the company, go bankrupt, get it off the stock market. And a lot of these shorts could have been shorting the play in anticipation of that happening, you know, on what was it, December... Um, 21st, but it was rescheduled for almost a month down the line. So there could have already been a lot of shorts in this play, but they kind of might have been trapped because, you know, if the stock goes up and they're short the company, then they have to cover their short position. So that's why I was interested in it on low volume. And that's why in the private discord, I alerted it first at 2.9 right here you can see at 2.9 at 6.05 a.m. I added NEXI 2.9 at 6.05 a.m. 6.05 was right here. So, you know, basically this is right here where the first ad was for ticker NEXI, which resulted in a potential 200% move. But, you know, I was watching this very closely. I alerted it there. And then, um, you know, that was a little bit of more of an aggressive ad. You don't really want to be adding, you know, just random companies, um, especially if you're not experienced. You don't want to be adding just random companies pre-market. They gapped up on low volume. It's really not going to work out most of the time. But I will, I'm proud to say this. This is where my market experience comes into play, and I already kind of know these tickers. I know how these tickers trade. I've been looking at, I've been, you know, watching these stocks for a while, and I just kind of know what's going on here. So... At that point, you know, I was still hanging on here. I was actually thinking about adding here. Um, as long as it held over that previous pre-market low, this wick here of about 271, it was able to do that. And then, you know, I started actually drawing a trend line here, this downtrend trend line. So that's basically what I did here is I drew this, went across that top wick right here. Boom, just like that. And um, I was basically waiting for this to potentially break over out of that downtrend and potentially break over the previous pre-market high, which was 3.3. .3. And that previous pre-market high is something you're really going to want to focus on on a lot of these tickers you're, you're looking to trade pre-market. That previous pre-market high back there was 3.3. You can see it bounced off there on that candle. That candle, I don't really count this because that was just a, run, a quick run up, but you can see it bounced off this on that candle. This candle, there was even a wick here. So that 3.3 was the previous pre-market high. And uh, let's go over back here. So it was able to, you know, viciously break over that previous pre-market high of 3.3. .3. And then it came back down, but it was holding over that previous pre-market high. These five-minute candles were closing, closing, closing a five-minute candle, closing a five-minute candle, closing a five-minute candle over that previous pre-market high multiple, multiple times. 
and I do believe that is where the main day trade idea came in within the private discord at 7.55 a.m. here added NEXI. And you can see at 7.55 a.m. was right there. So that was the main NEXI trade idea, obviously, before that big old 100% pop. And that's really what I was looking for for ticker NEXI in pre-market. It bro broke over the previous pre-market high. It was a low float. I figure there could have been a lot of shorts already trapped in this one. The volume got really high here. You can see that, you know, if, if you hover over a candle here on and you look at the top left here on Weeble, you can see how much volume it did on that one five-minute candle. I'm on the five-minute chart here. You can see it did 290K volume. 290k shares were traded in five minutes and there's only 850k shares and then it did 283k so the, th the float was basically traded right here in just you know 20 minutes and when the volume is high like that and when a lot of the float is being traded that is when it gets really really interesting that means there's a lot of eyes on the stock there's a lot of people trading the stock and it has a higher chance of popping and going up so that's where we caught it we had an absolute rip it ended up doing what, what i expected you know it ripped so it had everything we were looking at like i said the float the volume the uh, low market cap uh it previously had a big run shorts could have been trapped because that meeting got adjourned you know everything if you guys are having trouble even following what I'm talking about and you guys just want to hop in the private discord and get these alerts there is a link down below and then of course you know for the alert at around 10 o'clock we um you know I used that uh falling wedge pattern which I just discussed in yesterday's video so this is a falling wedge pattern I was actually looking at it on the one minute so you know I drew this here drew this here boom falling Oh, uh, let me flip back to Weeble, drew this here, drew this here, boom, falling wedge pattern, broke out of the falling wedge, held over VWAP, so you're going to want to use that VWAP on your chart, and then it held multiple candles over VWAP, and then right there had a 33% move, I believe the alert was right here, had a th another 30% move, so we caught pretty much every big move at a ticker NEXI today, and then it went on to run, you know, even had another... 34% move over there. So every big run we were was alerted with in the private discord here for ticker NEXI. And now I'm going to go over, you know, just a few other opportunities. But yeah, that was pretty much the trade idea for ticker NEXI. Uh, we also had AISP. This was alerted in the private discord for back here for about a 39% move. So another big runner. Um, for, tick, for ticker AI, AISP going forward, you're really going to need this to see this hold 2.25 or break over 225 for ticker AISP. This is an interesting play. They had some, you know, $10 million government news recently. It's an AI stock. It's a recent DSPAC, you know, so these have a lot of room to move higher if they do, but I would not really be interested in, in this unless it broke and held over 2.25, kind of like how NEXI broke and held over 3.3 .3 here. We would like to see that for AISPI to break and hold over 2.25 and not just break over it like this because it can break over and then just fall right back down. It has to break and hold over it. And if AISP falls under two, then basically would that would be done. That would be a sign that that trade is probably dead, but it's something to look at if it does get volume tomorrow and break over that level that I was talking about because it is holding up a little bit here. And then CDIO, you know, the DD still stands on CDIO. They had more news today, more positive news. It it, it closed over $3 yet again today. Cover that in yesterday's video, the chart and everything. I'll be updating this over time if it works out or if it doesn't work out. I will go over that ticker ROI. Guys, I predicted this. This could have been even a good short if you short penny stocks because I told you guys it was going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news. They told us that they had news coming today. They had news coming today. The news did not live up to its expectations. It sold off. Boom. I told you guys this was going to happen. A lot of people have been also mentioning ticker MGAM. Guys, I mean... The, the volume on this has completely died. Uh, there is no volume on it right now, although even with low volume, it is still holding up over that 50-day MA. Even on the daily here, it bounced right off of that. I did talk about, you know, it could have a bounce off of that. That's about a 23% move, but it is low volume. It's hard to trade. Overall, I'm really not too focused on this one, but 
I would say that as long as it does hold over the 50 day M 50 day MA, which is the screen line right here, then it is still in a play. That means it is a sign of a potential uptrend, but they're going to need news news for ticker MJM, although I'm not really too interested in it anymore personally. And uh, I also did want to quickly cover one more thing here. Just go over, you know, a few comments here. Shout out to the national here really appreciate you fo uh, focusing on education. Thanks for all the hard work. I will continue to do so. Drop a like if you do enjoy this video. Beps here, he said, uh, just purchased a membership. Shout out to you. I hope you do enjoy the membership. Ace Clop here, being a successful trader isn't typical. And that, guys, that's just true. Being a successful trader isn't typical. You do have to put in the work yourself. I'm not a financial advisor. Nobody on social media is a financial advisor here. You got to put in your work. But he did say he's having success in the Discord. And he said, and then Rich over here, he said he made 30% on whatever ticker I was talking about in the video. I can't remember exactly what it is, but that was the trade re review for ticker NEXI. And that was going over a few swings. Drop a like, hop in the Discord right now. If you if I flip over here, guys. You can go to the profit here. People are absolutely going crazy here. So definitely hop in there. 100% run on Toker NEXI. That's it for me. Peace.